Okay, thank you very much for joining. I'm not alone today. I'm together with uh, my colleague Tim. And today we'll be presenting um, um, a more technical presentation on how our Bitcoin algorithmic investing strategy works. So this is not about MDEX. Give you a little bit of oversight quickly. MDEX is a uh, custodian and an asset manager. Tim works in the asset management department as a fundamental analyst, and he has built a product based on what our custodian clients really want, and custodian clients really want more Bitcoin. And it's difficult to time the market, it's difficult to know when to buy or when to sell. sell. Selling is hard, no Bitcoiner ever wants to sell its Bitcoin, so we just ride the waves up and down. Um, but you can do it a little bit smarter if you know how to time your purchases and your selling moments uh, you can really benefit as a bitcoiner so the bitcoin algo strategy is a means to gather more bitcoin without investing more money it all sounds magical uh, it's not um, so tim i'd like to give you the floor to talk us through this thank you for thank the introduction you. Uh, hi guys, I'm Tim. I'm, the, um, uh, I'm a quantitative portfolio manager at Andex. Um, a little bit of background about me. Um, I did econometrics and I studied quantitative finance, which is a really fancy way of saying I like data. Um, and I especially like how data can explain behavior in financial markets. Um, and what I'm very interested about is about um, the Bitcoin market. How can data yeah, help us in explaining the Bitcoin market? Uh, and one of the most exciting ways to use data and financial markets is algorithmic investing. Um, so yeah, this topic is going to be about algorithmic investing with Bitcoin. Um, but first, a little bit of background on what is algorithmic investing? What are we actually dealing with here? Um, so yeah, the main characteristic of algorithmic investing is it is investing based on a strict set of rules. Um, you yeah, know beforehand when you're going to buy, when you're going to sell. If this, then that, no exceptions. So you know beforehand what the rules are and you should always stick to that plan. Uh, and sticking to the plan is probably one of the hardest things to do in investing. Uh, and that immediately brings us to the second point, um, which is also very important in algorithmic investing, there is no human intervention whatsoever. You cannot let your emotions get the best of you. Um, sometimes the market is moving against you. You should not panic. Um, and that's actually the basic, basic idea behind setting a strict set of rules and then following them. Just stick to the plan, stay with it. And then the third one, uh, this is where a little bit of complexity comes in. Um, what is very important with algorithmic investing is it requires extensive and very careful research. Before you make a plan which you're going to stick to, you should always know that that's the plan you want to stick to. You have to be convinced about the plan. Uh, you should just know that that's the plan that's going to help you with your goals. Uh, and our goal today is very simple. Um, our goal at Amdex is very simple. Um, we want to outperform Bitcoin buy and hold. So if we apply our strategy, does it do better than just holding Bitcoin? And why should you care? Um, because I guess most of you are holding Bitcoin already. Um, and I hope that that has helped you so far. I hope that it's been yeah, a profitable investing strategy. If not, I'm sorry, please stick to it. Um, but yeah, why should you care? Well, first of all, um, because analyzing market behavior can be very interesting um, and it can really give you insights in economically and, and psychologically interesting concepts. Uh, so it can really just spark some ideas in your head. It's, it's just fun to think about. And second of all, uh, it can help you achieve better returns than just holding Bitcoin. Uh, and not only better returns, but it can also help you to reduce the impact of price movements in your portfolio. So if you go up, then you don't immediately lose like 90% when the market moves against you. That's also something you do not want. Um, so that's exactly why you should care about algorithmic investing. Um, let's look at the basics. Um, basic idea is when do you buy, when do you sell? Of course, you guys all want me to tell you when to buy, when to sell, and when exactly the right moment is. It's very hard to say that, but we're gonna 
look at this from a few methods, a few straightforward approaches. Uh, the first of which is buy when the price is low, sell when the price is high. You guys already know that. That's not really something special that I'm telling you. So yeah, this is really quite not useful yet. But bear with me, um, because this has an algorithm. And the algorithm is like this, very two-step, very basic. Um, so the first step is to find a true price. Uh, this can be different from the market price or the current price. Um, it's actually the price uh, which your Bitcoin is, what is your Bitcoin actually worth? And then the market price or the current price is what does the market give you for your Bitcoin? If the market price is below the true price, then the market price is too low, you should buy. Because right now there's a discount, you should definitely buy right now. And if the market price is higher than the true price, then you should sell because the market apparently overestimates the value of Bitcoin. So that's a very basic ID, very simple ID. Let's bring this into practice. Um, so how do we know what the true price is? Uh, well, I'm going to take a page out of Cointime Economics. I don't know if anyone here in the room knows about this very special piece of, uh, of Bitcoin research. It was actually published this year by James Check and David Puel, uh, two very prominent figures in on-chain uh, research. Uh, and what they said, they introduced the active investor price. And they introduced this as a likely reference point for mean reversion models. Very fancy, um, I know, very cool words. What does it actually mean? Well, it actually means that um, they say that the price is always going to trace back to this active investor price. So if it's below it, then it will retrace back to it. If it's above it, then it will go down. So we know if the market price is above this active investor price, we should sell because the market price is way too high. And if it's below it, then we should buy because the market price is way too low. Um, that's what we did. Let's apply a backtester to this. Um, keep track of the right axis because that shows our portfolio value in Bitcoin if we follow this strategy. Um, it's not the best. It's actually pretty bad. Um, we just see uh, that up until you know, the end of 2020, we're doing just fine. Uh, and right then and there, uh, we sell and we miss the whole bull market. Um, our portfolio value denominated in Bitcoin terms just decreases, goes very low actually to, to 20%. Um, so yeah, at the end of the road, uh, we have a 58% drawdown. It's not great, it's actually just really bad. So it appears that it is very hard to determine whether the price is too high or too low. So that's not really going to help us any further because we just missed the full bull market. We just sell into the bull market and then we're done. So what we actually want to do, uh, we want to stay in Bitcoin when the bull market is there. So when prices are increasing, we want to be there. So we should buy when the price increase. That brings us to method two which is buy when price is increasing, sell when price is decreasing. Again, very simple. Um, how does this algorithm look? Well, it looks like this. First step, create a signal that indicates whether the price is increasing or decreasing. Uh, we can think of multiple signals. I will come back to that in another slide. Um, step two is we position accordingly, of course. We buy when the price is increased, we sell when the price is decreased. Very simple again. Um, so how do we know when prices are increasing or decreasing? We look at av uh, moving average crossovers. Um, right here on this graph, we have two moving averages. Uh, some of you may know them. Um, they actually show the death cross and the golden cross. Uh, it's the 50-day moving average in the dark green and the 200-day moving average in the light green. Um, and if you combine these two um, lines, then you can get a signal for increasing or decreasing prices. When the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average, uh, then we know that prices are increasing. And if it's the other way around, then we know the prices are decreasing. So again, um, we apply the backtester. Um, and this happens. It's a little bit better. The yellow line just shows our portfolio value denominated in Bitcoin. Um, and immediately we see that in the bull market, so during half of 2020, 2021, uh, we are fully invested in Bitcoin. 
our portfolio value in Bitcoin stays the same, so that's exactly what we want. Uh, and we also see that in the bear market, uh, we scale out of Bitcoin because prices are decreasing. So immediately we respond and we actually make a pretty good profit there. Uh, and then, yeah, we are a little bit late at, um, at buying again. So we, yeah, it's, it's still not great. Like 25% in a few years, it's not exactly what we're looking for. Uh, of course, you can think of other parameters. You can think of other stuff like 50 um, instead of 50 and 200. Uh, if you want to know more, if you want to test your parameters, find us at the expo, uh, and we can do it together. Um, third method, and this is actually my favorite, um, and it is also very ambiguous. We buy when the market looks good, we sell when the market looks bad. How would we know when the market looks good or when it looks bad? Um, we have a little bit more extensive algorithm here. Uh, the first step is to collect potentially relevant variables, and these variables can be anything. Going from on-chain, derivatives market, macro, we can look at um, technical analysis like we just did with the previous signal, but we want to look at like a vast range of, of different variables, and maybe they can teach us something about how the market moves. Um, and that's the next step, of course, like we want to know how should they explain the market? And right here, you don't need to calculate anything. You just need to think about it. Common sense, use economic concepts. Think about how should these variables explain the market? What do we expect? And then the third step is to test that expectation. So thinking about what makes sense, you should know how, oh, if they actually explain the market, if they can actually help us in creating a great signal that tells us when to buy or when to sell. And this step is actually when a lot, of, a lot of quantitative research comes in. Actually, we need to apply mathematical models here. This should take weeks, months, even years if you really want to be convinced that your strategy is working. So step three is really the bulk of everything. Then in step four, we can transform these, use, these useful variables into signals. We can combine them, and we can get one number that describes the market. And if the signals generally point towards a good market, we buy. If they point towards a bad market, we sell. It's actually pretty simple. So we should collect relevant variables. I'm going to give one example of probably a metric that you guys all know, the fear and greed index. Um, it's a very simple index. Uh, it combines a lot of different information from social media, uh, from price action, from different markets. Um, and what the actual application is of this fear and greed index, um, usually what they say, we should sell when there's a lot of greed in the market. When there's a lot of greed, when this index is above 90, we should definitely sell because there's a bubble. There must be a bubble. And that's exactly what's happening at the end of the bull market in 2021. And when a market is at its most fearful, that's when we should buy. So when it's actually below the, the 10, that's definitely a good buying zone. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. Uh, instead, I'm going to think of something else, because we just figured out that there's a lot of momentum in the Bitcoin price. You should actually buy when prices are rising. That's at least what the last method told us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy when greed is moderate. When the market is moderately greedy, that's actually a good place to buy. When the market is moderately fearful, that's actually a good place to sell. So I'm going to draw lines at 40 and 60. 40 meaning moderately fearful, 60 meaning more moderately greedy. And we buy if the line goes above it, and if the line goes below it, we sell. And in the middle, we just stick to the position that we previously bought or sold. As it happens, uh, the yellow line, there is it again, corresponding to the right axis. Uh, so we see our portfolio value in Bitcoin terms. It actually increases with 58%, which is way better than we have previously seen. It even goes beyond 3x at some point. So we know that this is definitely the right way to go. Uh, we should actually look at whether the market is good or the market is bad. We should not look at just prices. Prices don't tell us anything. It's very hard to say whether a price is high or low. And also, looking at increasing or decreasing prices, this is also not really something that we could use just on itself. We should know whether the market is good or when it is bad. 
And that's exactly what we did at Amdex. 58% uh, wasn't good enough for us. Uh, so our Bitcoin algo strategy, uh, which we introduced last July, um, actually gives us, over the course of a few years, a 89% profit. And this is after costs, after everything is, um, yeah, subtracted from it. Um, and we're also looking at not only a um, good return, but we're also looking at a steady return. So we're not looking for large drawdowns that, that, that are like great like this 3 to yeah, 1.5. Um, this is just a little bit better. Um, we know what's behind this, um, so we actually use this. Uh, and I want to yeah, thank you for your intention because I've run out of time right now. Uh, if you want to know more about this Bitcoin algo strategy, come by our stand. I, I'm happy to tell you about it. Um, right now, I want to thank you for your attention. And good. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee. A city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.